everybody. Welcome back to Chemistry with Mr. Stranary. This is one of our first lessons here in Chemistry Unit 1, Chemical Foundations. Today we're going to be talking about accuracy, precision, and then measuring one of those two things with something that we're going to call percent error. Now before we dive into things, let's set up some objectives for what we want to discuss today in this lesson. First thing that we're going to want to worry about is describing and kind of understanding what accuracy and precision actually is and how can it apply to different measurements that we take in the lab. The other thing that we want to worry about is calculating a percent error and then what that tells us about our data, whether it's accurate, whether it's precise, does it describe both, uh, and then how we can use that to help us improve uh, our experiments. So the first thing that we're going to want to worry about is accuracy and precision. When we are in the lab and we're trying to measure something or run an experiment, it's important to be able to get things that we want. We want to be able to run the experiment and get the results that we are looking for. Accuracy and precision are two big things that are going to carry out throughout the year. And Whenever you do an experiment, whether it's in chemistry, physics, biology, that are going to be very, very important. So let's take a look. The first thing that we're going to talk about is accuracy. That's exactly what you would think it is. It's how close are you to your accepted value? How close are you to what you wanted to measure? Were you really, really far off? Did you get exactly what you wanted to? If I wanted to weigh out a block of gold that was 500 grams, did I come out with 300 grams? Or did I get it right on the nose at 500 grams? Accuracy is that measurement of how close you are to the accepted value. You need to know the accepted value to be able to measure your accuracy. Your precision, on the other hand, is how often you can do something over and over again. It's how close you are in your measurements. This is being able to weigh something over and over again and get the same exact answer. It's being able to take a length on on your desk, let's say, if you're measuring how long your desk is, and being able to get that measurement over and over and over again. It's the repeatability of your measurements that your precision actually is. Accuracy, it's how close you are to what you wanted to get to, and precision is being able to do that over and over again. So it's okay to just be accurate, it's okay to just be precise. You wanna get both of them. If you can be accurate, and then do that over and over again, that's exactly what you're looking for in your experiments. So if it doesn't really make sense, that's okay. We can go through and we can look at it visually in what I like to think about with darts. So when we look at this, we're gonna look all the way up here in this top left-hand corner. This is gonna be the one that we're aiming for every single time. Whenever we run an experiment, whenever we do something in the lab, we wanna be able to hit the bullseye, and be able to do it over and over again. So that's three shots in the center. I knew every single time that I was gonna hit that. If I took another shot, I know it's probably gonna end up right next to it. This is an example of accuracy and precision. I have both, I'm accurate, I hit the bullseye, and I'm precise, I did it over and over and over again. This is what we're looking for when we have to run an experiment. Accurate and precise. If we look over here to the right, over on this one, let's see what happens with these shots now. All right, so those three shots, let's see. One's right in the middle, one's right on the line right here, so I would say that that was kind of where we were shooting for. And then one over here is in the yellow. It's close to the red, but not exactly there. If I took a fourth shot, though, do I know where it's going? Not really, not right now. I know it's gonna be somewhere close. I know it's gonna be somewhere in the middle, maybe. So I'd say this is accurate without being very precise. I know that the fourth shot's gonna end somewhere around here, but it's not as clustered as this was in our very good example. So this example would be accuracy without being very precise. If we look down here. All right, so this one actually looks a little bit different than the one we just looked at. This one is really clustered together very, very well. This I know if I took a fourth shot, it's probably going to end up somewhere around there. But is it anywhere near the center, our target? This is what we're aiming for. This is, would be our accepted value, what we're trying to get at right here. No, it's not anywhere close to that whatsoever. So this would be the, the opposite example. This would be being precise, being able to do this over and over again without being accurate, being accurate at all. 
And of course, if you're figuring this part out, the last one is going to be neither accurate or precise. No idea. If I took a four shot, I have no idea where I'm going with that one. So what we want is we want to be all the way up here. We want to be accurate and precise. This is the one we want. Most of the time, you're going to end up one of these two. You're either going to be accurate without being very precise. You're going to be precise without being very accurate. Both of those are okay because we can fix them. We can figure out, all right, how do I move this cluster back up to the center? How do I tighten this up? If I'm neither accurate nor precise, it's not going to work out very well for your experiments. All right, so how do we calculate whether we are accurate or not? That's where our percent error is going to come in. It is a measure of how inaccurate a measurement is when I compare it to the exact value. And to make it easier for us, we're going to turn it into a percentage going to make it easier to, you know, communicate it around and be able to actually work with that number. And if the definition confuses you, that's okay. I like to think of it like this. How close are you to your accepted value? How close are you to your bullseye? If you have a small percent error, it means you're pretty darn close. If you're only 1% off, that's great. If you are 100% off, that means you were nowhere close to what you wanted to get. The bigger the value, the less accurate you actually are in your measurements. And we can go through and calculate this if we know certain things about our data. So I like to look at an example. Whenever I have something that I have a formula for, I like to go through and put an example to it. Here's your example. If a student measured the room width at 8.46 meters and the accepted value was 9.45 meters, what was their accuracy? Seems pretty complicated. We got two numbers there. We don't know what's what. Well, it's going to be pretty simple when we look at our formula. And here's going to be your formula for percent error. You're going to have this EV thing. We're going to put all the words to it later. Minus your AV times 100. That's where our percentage comes in. And then we're going to divide it by this thing AV again. Well, I've made it really easy for you guys because I've got it color coded. But we're going to need to know two things. We're need to, going to need to know the experimental value. That's this EV. That's the measured value in your problem. It says it right here. Student measured the room. That's this 8.46 meters. That is going to be your experimental value. The AV, on the other hand, is your accepted value. That's the true number. That's exactly what this room is going to measure, 9.45 meters. Once you know those two things, you can go through and calculate how accurate you were in your experiment or in your measurements. Once I know those two, let's just plug everything in and I'll do the math through with you. So, we've got our experimental value, 8.46 meters. We have our accepted value, 9.45 meters. All I'm going to do is plug them directly into my formula. Wherever I see EV or AV, I'm going to take these numbers and plug them right in. And then it becomes a simple math problem. Now, if we don't remember our PEMDAS, our order of operations, we're going to do everything in the parentheses first. And then it doesn't matter. We can go through multiply and then divide. So when I do this subtraction right here, I'm going to end up with a negative number. It's okay. We're going to talk about what that negative number or the positive number means in a little bit. I come out with negative 0.99, and now it's just multiplication and division. When I go through, I'll multiply by 100, I come out with negative 99, I divide it by 9.45, and my percent error is going to be negative 10.5%. So that means when I took my measurement, I was off by 10.5%. Now, 10.5 is fine. Am I over by 10.5% or am I under by 10.5%? And that's where this negative or positive value is going to come in. If I am negative, that means that I came in below my accepted value. That means my measurement was 10% off below what the accepted value was supposed to be. If I came in positive, it was a positive 10.5%, that means that I was over by 10.5% of whatever my number was supposed to be. This can help you guys out when you're trying to figure out, well, where did I go wrong? Did I overshoot it? Did I undershoot it? How far did I do that? It can help you kind of redesign or reevaluate your experiments if you know that positive or that negative value. 
All right, and again, the student was off by almost 11%. Now, the question that you should be asking yourself is, well, 11%, that sounds pretty good, right? Well, acceptable error, we're going to say, for our class is going to be plus or minus 5%. So if you are within a negative 5% or a positive 5% error, you are okay. That's acceptable. We'll, we'll go with a 5%. If you are greater than 5%, you've got to go back and remeasure it or reevaluate the experiment that you set up for certain kinds of error. Think about it this way. This is your bullseye. If you get within this 5%, either way, you're good. You hit your target. You did what you were looking for. You can adjust it if you really want to, but you hit your target. Anything greater than that, you're hitting off your target. You know we're close. If you were to be at, a, at an archery range, would you go through and, and continue to hit over here if you were all the way greater than 5% error? No, you would readjust and you would end up back over here. In science, it's the same thing. We want to be able to be on this bullseye and we say that's that within 5% error. Before we end, I just want to take a one quick note on error. It's not a mistake. It is not the same thing as a mistake. If I spill some liquid, that's not error. That's just me being clumsy. Error would be your balance being off every single time if it's not calibrated correctly. Error refers to the difference between those two values. If you make a mistake, if you spill a little bit, or if you weigh out a certain extra, that's a mistake. That is not error. We'll talk about that more in class if you guys are confused about that. All right, let's recap. This is the end of this lesson. Let's recap. So accuracy and precision. This is going to help us get reliable data. We want both in our measurements. If I can be accurate or I can be precise, that's okay, that can help us figure something out, but we want to be able to do both. Accuracy is the closeness of our measurement to the accepted value, while precision is our repeatability. Can you do it over and over and over again? The accepted value and your measured value, you have to know that to be able to calculate your percent error. If you don't know one of those two, you can't calculate your percent error, you need to know both. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching and following along. Make sure your notes are filled out as you're doing this. Go back and pause it if you need to to copy down any definitions. I'll see you guys later.